Hello, everyone. Welcome to my craft table. I have a few new products that I want to share with you all today, and then I'm going to make a Mother's Day card. I know it's kind of early for creating Mother's Day cards, but some of these products, or I should say all of these products were really inspiring. Let me show you some of these gorgeous new goodies from Spellbinders. This first product is called Mirrored Arch Labels, and these are great for backgrounds for your cards, but they also coordinate with this beautiful new Better Press plate called Mirrored Arch Nested Sprigs, and it has several plates to this. You can do them all in separate colors, so I'm excited to play with this one. Next, I have a gorgeous Better Press plate called Peony Background. This is from the Let's Celebrate collection by Giannis Mukola. I love Peony, so I was so excited to play with this one. Also from the Let's Celebrate collection, we have these two beautiful products. So this one is called the Floral Celebration. And if you like coordinating stencils, you can purchase that separate or in a bundle. And then Yana has created some beautiful Better Press sentiments. These also have the coordinating dies to cut them out. This set also includes sentiments to put on the insides of your cards. And last, we have the Mother's and Father's Day sentiments. And it's a set where you can press them all at once and then die cut them all at once. I love it when they do that. So here is the Peony Background Better Press plate that I'm going to be playing with in today's video. So let's take out this plate. It's a little bit larger than an A2 sized panel. Let me move these to the side here and pull out my Better Press system and my inks. We'll start with the inks. I want to press this with a few different colors. This is one of my favorite inks in their new release. It's called Cruise and it's just a soft, beautiful blue. And then I decided to use Coastal. I'm also going to use the new gray ink called Thunder. And then I will come in with their black ink as well. But let's start off with the lightest color first. I'm going to roll some tape to put behind my porcelain white cotton cardstock. And the panel I'm using is an A2 sized panel, but it's a little bit smaller than the plate. As I said before, the plate's a little bit larger. <laughs> and I'm going to ink this up several times with the cruise ink first. Starting with the lightest ink and ending with the darkest makes it easy because you don't have to clean the plate in between. Otherwise, you could contaminate your ink pads. OK, so let's see how this first one turned out. And it is very pale. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but still very beautiful. Here is the coastal. It's a little bit darker, and I really love the look of this one. Here's the thunder. It looked like it got a little more ink up at the top. And then last, I have the black ink. And oh, I just loved this one. So this is the one I'm going to be coloring in in today's video. I'm going to use my zigs on the panel. The zig markers blend beautifully on this cotton cardstock. So I'm going to mimic the colors of the peonies I used to have in my garden in my old house. So the first flower that I'm coloring in is going to be a deep pink. The zig colors that I'm using for this are called dark pink and light carmine. I use the light carmine to draw the pink ink out. And you could go petal by petal like, like I'm doing here. Or I'm going to show you a quick way to do it. And it turns out just beautiful as well. But for the leaves, I'm using two different colors of green using a dark and a light, and the dark is called olive green, but it was just a tad too dark. So I have eventually come in with light green, and my lightest green is pale green. So a fast way to color in these flowers is just to kind of scribble some of the ink around the flower. I'm trying to put the ink mostly in the deepest, darkest nooks and crannies of these flowers. And then I'll draw out the color to the tips with the light carmine again. And it blends beautifully on this paper. Now I'm just taking a little more time to pull the colors out to the tips of the leaves. 
And it turns out really pretty this way. I mean, it's a really fast way to color and you can go petal by petal. But if you're pressed for time, you can just kind of scribble down some color and blend it out with a lighter pen. And it works. It looks pretty. For the rest of my flowers, however, I am going to kind of go petal by petal. I do come in with the dark pink again, just to add a little more shading and dimension to this pretty flower. And if you happen to go outside of the lines onto the black ink, it doesn't show up at all. <laughs> so it's, it's nice having a black background like this. It just adds such a beautiful and dramatic effect. And this is where I come in with the dark pink again and just add more shading. One thing I really want to do this spring is to add peonies to my new garden. They're such a magical flower. Okay, so for the white peony, all I'm going to do to this is to add some gray zig marker to it. This will add some shading to it. The challenge for me is to not add too much. I don't want it to look like a gray peony. So I just want to put down a little bit of gray. I will come in with a darker gray, again, in the deepest shadows to add dimension. The white ones are really fast and easy to color in. And this is where I come in with the really dark gray. And again, I'm blending that out with, you can blend it out with the lighter gray, or you could come in with a Zig Blender pen. And next I'm going to color in a light pink peony. For this peony, I'm using pink and light pink, putting the dark pink down first and blending it out with the light pink. And this time I'm going to go petal by petal. This was an easier peony flower to color in. There weren't so many small petals in the center of this one. I'm also using the clear blender pen to pull out the color. I'm going to do a lot of this off camera for the sake of time. And for all of the green leaves, I do the same technique. I put down the light green first and then blend it out with the pale green. I'm going to jump ahead to the finished panel. There it is, all done. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to pull out my Spellbinders paper trimmer and cut this down so that it measures five and a quarter by four. This will give me a pretty white matting when I attach it to the card base. I'm going to keep those strips that I cut away too and put those on the inside of the card. I just couldn't throw those away. So let's center the panel onto the card base. This is going to make a fabulous Mother's Day card. Now I'm going to put this aside and work on the sentiment. And again, this set is called Mother's and Father's Day Sentiments. And they say, Happy Mother's Day, Happy Father's Day. Mom, thanks for everything. And Dad, you are the best. I'll ink them all up on this plate with some black ink. I'm using some more of the porcelain cotton cardstock. And then here it is all pressed into the paper. And then I'll use the coordinating die to cut these all out. I'm going to use the one that says Happy Mother's Day on the front of my card. And then on the center of the card, I'll use Mom Thanks for Everything. I decided to pop up the sentiment with some small foam squares. And then Mother's Day cards, I love to pair with pearls. So I'm going through my Spellbinders pearl collection to see which one I want to use. I had an idea that I wanted to use the black, but I just wanted to make sure there wasn't a color that looked better. I think the black is going to be really stunning because of the black background. Some sparkly white gems would look really stunning on this card too. I'm going to add one more black pearl on the white petunia and let me give you a close-up look. Isn't that so fun? So many things you can do with this background plate. Okay, so I did go ahead and glue the leftover strips from the panel on the inside. 
now I'm going to glue down my second sentiment. And I'm just going to glue it down flat, of course, inside the card. I'll put all of the links to Giannis McCullough's gorgeous Let's Celebrate collection in the description box. You'll definitely want to check those out, as well as the Mirrored Arch collection. I'll be creating more videos using these beautiful products. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you were inspired. Have a wonderful crafty day, my friends. Bye.